type checkers, state management, unit testing, hooks. Oh my. React is not your father's JavaScript library. There's a metric crap ton of stuff you need to know just to get started. Fortunately, the React roadmap illuminates many of these components. Today, we are checking out the React roadmap. This video is brought to you by Freelance Newbie. Start getting paid for your developer skills with the help of this course created by a working freelancer. Visit realtoughcandy.io and get started with your freelancing journey today. Hey, what's up developers? It's RTC here checking in with you with the React roadmap. Now, I shared this link in my YouTube community tab the other day. A subscriber clapped back at me and shared another roadmap. So we're going to go over both of these today. We're going to explore some of their similarities and differences as well. I just want to point out, though, that this roadmap, both of these are on GitHub. This one, however, is on its own custom domain. It's roadmap.sh forward slash react. This person has some awesome roadmaps. They have front end, back end, DevOps, amazing. And this React one is no exception, just love it. But this one is pretty good too. So we're gonna start with this one. The purpose of this roadmap is to give you an idea about the React landscape. The roadmap will guide you if you are confused about what to learn next, rather than encouraging you to pick up what is hip and trendy. You should grow some understanding of why one tool would be better suited for some cases than the other. And remember, hip and trendy does, does not always mean best suited for the job. Very important disclaimer. If you go through this map and this one for that matter, just treating it like a checklist, I think you're going to get really frustrated very quickly. <laughs> This is just to illustrate the anatomy of the React ecosystem in 2020 going into 2021. Even though, yes, this does say 2019, I think for the most part, this is this is pretty accurate for this year and going into next year as well. So let's check out what they're trying to tell us with this in the React roadmap. First of all, you can't just jump into React. And this is one thing I do like about this map is that it leads up to learning React, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript basics. And then after that, going down to general development skills. That includes Git, HTTP, HTTPS protocol, learning to search for solutions, aka getting your Google game on point. And even though these things are really small font, they're really important. Like you need to have your Google game on point. This is one of the most important things of this entire map. I mean, really, this stuff is, is useless if you don't know how to find a solution and put those research skills and those investigation skills to use. So just pointing that out. So general dev skills. And then once you get those, it's time to enter React. Notice on this chart how many nodes we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 stops in this, it almost looks like a backbone, 16 stops in this React roadmap once you enter the React gate. Whereas if you go to this one, the organization is a lot more compact and it's based on fundamentals, then advanced, then ecosystem. This chart, this roadmap is a lot more granular when it comes to the steps. Like, okay, React, step one, got to stop here with these build tools. Package Managers, NPM. Webpack for another type of build tool. Task Runners, NPM scripts. Going to this one, I don't even think NPM is on here. If it is, it would be in here somewhere with the ecosystem. So taking these two and comparing them, I think could be helpful for a lot of developers who are just trying to get a snapshot idea of all the tools. I mean, it's not, it's not exhaustive, but all the most popular, well-known tools that we have available to us in React. NPM, Webpack. Then we go over to the styling over here. There are four different paths. And this is, I mean, this is really winding and massive. Whereas with this one, I th it's just a lot more digestible. We go down here. There's some other stuff that maybe isn't necessarily 100% related to Re uh, React, rather, like TypeScript, which is awesome, but it's not limited to the React ecosystem. So it's interesting because this chart fuses outside technologies in the React roadmap, whereas this one is very React centric until you get down to stuff like testing. And as you can see in this testing section, we have Jest, React Testing Library, and Cypress. 
Whereas in this one, testing is all the way down here and look at all these options. We have a section on unit testing. We have one stop and integration testing, a big section on end to end testing, Selenium, Cypress, Puppeteer, Cucumber, Nightwatch, lots of options. As we get further down this backbone, we have less must know and more good to know and optional technologies like backend framework integration, React on Rails. I think another really important thing too, when you're looking at this roadmap or any other, when it comes to your learning, learning journey, think about your own goals and where you want to be employment wise. Because even though this chart is saying, yes, we highly recommend you learn CSS preprocessors, specifically post CSS and SAS and SCSS. If your future company isn't dealing with preprocessors, you don't want to be spending six months learning the ins and outs of post CSS and SAS SCSS. You need to focus on things that your employer is using. So just something to keep in mind here, the legend up here, the yellow says personal must know. I'm not sure if it's like personal for the person who built this chart or personal, like on a personal level for you. And both of these creators are very clear that this is just to give you an idea, give you a snapshot. And I think this person who created this one, disclaimer, keep this in mind. He says this down here, please note the list is opinionated. You might have different opinions than those of the author. Having said that, we would love to hear your opinions and incorporate them in the picture if suitable. We have so many awesome resources out there, whether it's video, interactive, good old fashioned blog posts, however you like learning, good old fashioned books, however you like learning, it's out there for you to learn. Having this chart or this one or even both of them to bring to the React course of your choosing, I think is gonna help you understand where everything fits together a little better. Uh, these charts do have some awesome uses, but as the disclaimers state, they're just to give you an idea about the landscape. Use them to your advantage, but don't use them as a cornerstone because if you just use them, if you just go from step to step without reflecting about your own personal coding journey, you're gonna get frustrated. So be aware of that. Use this to your advantage. It's a free resource. These maps are freaking awesome. This first one by Adam Golab, as I mentioned earlier, a lot more granular when it comes to the stops. And this one is, I think, a little better organized and perhaps less overwhelming. Uh, I do really like how it starts with the fundamentals and goes into the advanced and then the ecosystem. And this one doesn't even talk about the road leading up to React. Whereas this one, it gives you this little snapshot of things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, basics, all these goodies. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit a button, share this video, tell a friend. I'm RTC. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.